In this episode, we're summarizing the 8th episode from Season 4 of the Wire series titled Corner Boys. The episode first aired on November 5th, 2006. In the beginning, we see Prez is working with his students on Division, but Calvin keeps interrupting class and this is negatively impacting Randy's ability to learn the lesson. Prez then calls on Calvin as a way of silencing him, but instead Calvin responds with the right answer. When Prez asks how he knew the answer, he shows how he was able to see the remnants of what Prez had erased during his previous class, showing yet again how the students are much more perceptive of their environment than Prez gives them credit for. As we head over to the special class where the other corner kids are located, they are finally beginning to realize that regardless of how they behave, they will not be suspended. This is what today in the education system is called quote unquote restorative justice. When asked to describe themselves, Naaman says he and all the others are just players in the game. At first, Albert says he would like to be a street kingpin, but later says, he would truly like to be a doctor like the famous and world-renowned Dr. Ben Carson. At one point, Colvin catches Naaman with a magazine he should not have, and instead of admitting his guilt and taking responsibility, Naaman denies being the owner, and this reminds Colvin of what his prior drug stops always sounded like. He sees the resemblance between Naaman's response and how drug dealers respond when they are caught with drugs. They always say, it is not theirs. As a result of this interaction, Colvin realizes that these corner kids see school as a testing ground where they can practice their tactics of deception. When Colvin begins asking them questions that they can relate to, like what makes a good corner boy, suddenly they all want to participate and share their thoughts. Naaman and Kwame respond by saying the most important thing for a good corner boy is your reputation because that is what prevents people from stealing from you. They explain that if someone steals from you, it must be addressed or it can spiral out of control, leading others in the game to see you as prey. Zenobia suggests those who steal must be beaten. Darnell says they simply must pay you back and that if the worker does not pay you back, then you will know for certain that they are stealing from you and that at that point you are justified and physically hurting them. When asked why beatings are necessary, they all agree that the reason is simple. You cannot appear to be weak in the game. In another scene, Naaman is caught by his mother preparing the vials of drugs in his bedroom, and she insists that he hire someone to manage the drugs because the police could technically seize their home if it was found that he was dealing drugs and preparing those drugs in their home. Naaman then assigns Kennard to be his lieutenant, but when Naaman receives the money, and gives it to Delanda, his mom, she claims that this is just not enough money and blames the location of where he is operating from as the reason. She rushes to Bodie to demand a better drug spot for her son to manage. Michael gets home from school and his mother has sold the food he purchased for drug money. She asks him to give her more money and he gives her $10. She also tells him that she will take back the DSS card from him if he continues to get in her way. Michael's brother Bug then tells Michael that his father is back home again. Michael is repulsed when Bug's father goes near him and Michael tells his mother that she promised she would never let him back in the house. His mother ignores Michael's concern and tells him that he now has to give the DSS card to Bug's father. The next day in school, Perez discusses how his students are struggling with the exams. His colleagues remind him that performance is low across all grades and subjects, and thus he shouldn't really worry about that. Two teachers tell him that all he needs to do is continue to stick to the curriculum. Miss Grace, however, gives him better advice when she tells him that he needs a balanced approach. She suggests he take some time to teach the curriculum and a bit of time to teach the things he feels the students truly need. Prez is told that his first year as a teacher is much more about him surviving than anything else. Later on, Bunk returns to Andre's store with a grand jury summons, finding him talking to a sex worker before bringing him in. Bunk and Holly warn Andre that lying to the police is a lesser charge compared to perjury before the grand jury, which carries a minimum 10-year sentence. The grand jury prosecutor reinforces this, prompting Andre to retract his story even before testifying. Bunk and Holly deliver this information to Landsman, who is enraged at losing a cleared case due to Bunk's interference. Landsman berates Bunk's actions and suggests Holly should stand up for himself going further against such interference. We see that at the end of the day, the department simply wants to close those murder cases 
regardless of who actually committed it. In another scene, Herc pulls over Marlo and Herc insists that Marlo return his camera during a traffic stop, but Marlo remains evasive. Dozerman urges Herc to come clean to Marimo about the camera being stolen, but instead Herc harassingly raids Marlo's hangout and stops Chris and Snoop, finding their lime and nail gun in the process and demanding his camera's return through intimidation. Herc remembers Randy's information about little Kevin, suggesting he'll use that information to get to Marlo via Lex's murder. Herc is so nervous about being caught having lost the camera that he is willing to sacrifice Randy's information that he was told to keep quiet from the get-go. Continuing his observation at the Baltimore City Police Department, Tommy Carsetti spends a day with the Eastern District's DEU squad. He witnesses low-level arrests focused on boosting statistics rather than impactful police work, which disappoints him. Deputy Commissioner William Rawls explains that this numbers game resulted from Mayor Royce's pressure for statistics and affirmative action policies, which promoted underprepared officers prematurely, leading to a lack of quality leadership and an emphasis on crime reduction over emphasizing proper training. Rhonda Perlman then visits Daniels, who expects a meeting with Carsetti about successful police practices. Daniels contemplates how honest he should be given concerns about Burrell and Rawls retaining their positions. In a strategy meeting, Carsetti's team hopes to reduce crime and build a downtown project bearing his name, avoiding education issues while the Democratic Party eyes Carsetti's gubernatorial run in 2008. Meanwhile, Burrell acknowledges Rawls is moving against him as they discuss impressing the new administration together. We see Carsetti has not even had his foot in the door as the mayor yet, and the party is already looking to play him as governor for the following election. That was episode number 45, titled Corner Boys. To watch the next or previous episode summary, the links are in the description and at the end of this video. Since you made it to the end of this video, remember I am summarizing this entire series as well as other popular works of culture like literature, movies, and TV shows. I have the playlists of our summaries in the description as well. Also, if you found the video to be valuable, share it with a friend and click like so that YouTube can recommend it to other viewers like you. The best way to support this channel is by becoming a Patreon supporter or by buying us a coffee. You will find those links in the description as well. Doing this helps our channel out tremendously. I really thank you for your support.